I'm extremely excited and grateful to be here with you guys tonight. And uh, first of all, let's let's give everybody in this room a big round of applause. Uh, I know the, the hard work and dedication it takes for you guys to, to perform on the field and, and as well in the classroom. So congratulations. Um, I also need to give a shout out to the Rebel Golf team, uh, three straight Mountain West Conference titles. Uh, finished up yesterday, I believe, and Shintaro won by like 100 shots. So congratulations to the, uh, the golf team. So quickly, how many of you guys in this room plan on uh, playing your sport at the next level? And be honest, don't be, don't be shy. Okay, good. How many of you plan on uh, playing for at least five years and making a career out of it? Why are the, why are the, why are the hands left? Should be the exact same. Good. So, uh, a little bit of context I'd like to provide you guys with a little bit about myself um, and, and how I got here. Um, it doesn't seem like that long ago that I was sitting down with you guys, and, and now I have my wife sitting in the front row, and I hope to God my eight month old baby boy is sleeping for the babysitter. Um, so, life has changed. But um, I was uh, born and raised in Southern California. Uh, grew up playing uh, a number of different sports, ended up settling on golf, um, played high school golf, and uh, was fortunate enough to have, uh, I don't know, five to ten offers to come to a different school, and uh, ultimately narrowed that down to uh, USC and UNLV, and, um, you know, from the age of probably eight or nine on, the goal was to play on the PGA Tour, and, and that was about it, and uh, my pros and cons were pretty even at the time. It was a tough decision. Um, but ultimately, I took a look and said, who, wh or which school has the most number of players on the PGA Tour, USC or UNLV? And I looked it up, and that made the decision really easy. Uh, Coach Knight, what he teaches, what he uh, stands for, um, obviously produces amazing PGA Tour players. We have a couple that are probably sitting here in this room with us tonight. Um, and so the decision was easy when I saw that. I wanted to play on the PGA Tour. Uh, that was my goal, period. And so I came to UNLV my freshman year. Uh, we had the number two ranked uh, recruiting class that year. Uh, came into a program that was, I think we were ranked top 10. And uh, at the time we had uh, the best amateur golfer on the planet, Ryan Moore, uh, pretty much winning everything and breaking every single record. So um, it was a pretty easy decision, but we came in with a, you know, star-studded freshman class, um, and I learned real quick that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> and uh, the fresh, my freshman year was an interesting year. Um, ended up redshirting, spent way too much time in the gym, put on about 20 pounds, and uh, completely forgot how to hit a golf ball in the meantime. So redshirted my freshman year, but at the same time, there, there, there was a reason for that. I knew that my senior year, I wanted to focus completely on golf, have basically already graduated by that point, um, and that is actually what I what I ended up doing uh, my senior year. I think I took history of the Beatles and wine tasting, something like that. It was, it was purely purely focused on golf, and um, that ended up being a, a very good decision. Um, as I was uh, getting ready to, to finish up my collegiate career, um, I was preparing for uh, professional golf. Um, was putting together business plans and, and pitch decks for uh, potential investors and sponsors to go out there and play um, and, and got out there and immediately qualified for the, uh, the PGA Tour Canada. Uh, I ended up playing four years up there and kind of hopped around um, all over the globe playing different tournaments. Um, really enjoyed my time out there. It, it is the ultimate grind. Um, like anyone in this room that goes and plays at the next level, what you will find is your first year or two out there, um, it's gonna be very different than college. Um, I think the boys flew in flew in on a private jet from their conference title, they paid, all, all the meals are paid for, uh, dry cleaning is done for them, you're spoiled. College, you know, Division one college athletes are spoiled. That is very different when you get out there into the real world and um, you're out there grinding with guys that have families um, they're trying to provide, and uh, it was a great learning experience. But uh, nonetheless, at, at about the end of my third year playing professionally, um, 
I started finding internally that I didn't want to go through the process anymore. I knew that there was a problem when I didn't want to practice anymore because, as, you know, coach knows I was always a, a ball beater and I'd practice all the time. Uh, it's all, all that I wanted to do. And at the end of that third year, I, I was having a hard time getting up, wanting to go to the gym, wanting to practice. And so I knew there was something, something wrong. Um, and at the time, and, and like many of us in this room, you're the athlete, you're, you're the golfer, you're the basketball player, you're the, you play football, you know, whatever sport you play, that's part of your, a huge part of your identity. And at the end of uh, that third year, I was, you know, well, my entire life was geared towards one thing, playing on the PGA Tour. And I found myself thinking about different things, and specifically business. Um, I, I had always had a, an interest, um, and really at the end of that, that period, I was confused. What do you do when you've been doing something your entire life, and it's not in you anymore? You don't really want to do it. Uh, and, and at that point in my life, I, I kept thinking about the principles, the lessons that Coach Knight had taught us at UNLV uh, over five years, and um, that ultimately made my decision very easy. I, I remember it very vividly. I was in uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada, playing a PJ Tour Canada event, and missed the cut. And I went back to the house that I was staying at, and uh, said to my roommate, I'm done, I'm done. He goes, what do you mean? You, you're gonna like fly back home, practice a little bit, I'll see you next week or in two weeks? I said, no, 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 done. So that was the last professional tournament that I played. And then I thought to myself, now what? what what's the next step gonna be? Is my initial thought was to go get a master's in business, took a look at what master's cost. And uh, about at the same time, I had one of my good buddies from, from the golf team um, come to me with a drone. And he goes, Brett, we need to be flying golf courses with this. And this was back in, you know, end of 2012, uh, early 2013. And at the time, nobody knew what a drone was. It just, it, it was even less known than it is now. Um, and he came to me and said, we need to be flying golf courses. And I bought in immediately. Um, decided to uh, start a business. Um, get kicked around a little bit, as opposed to going to school where you're, you're still gonna get kicked around, but uh, really learn the hard way. And um, So we opened a business, uh, raised raised a small fan, friends and family seed round. Um, our first client, naturally, was the PGA Tour. Uh, made, made a phone call over to the PGA Tour marketing office, and they said, yeah, come on out. And uh, at the time, we had a little bit of money. We went out and bought this expensive, complicated drone that I had no engineering engineering experience. I had no idea how to build anything. So here we are sitting in a room at my house putting this drone together for about 30 days straight uh, to get ready for this, for this job at the PGA Tour. So long story short, we figure this thing out. Go to uh, Pebble Beach, which is my favorite place on the planet and was able to fly for the PGA Tour up at Pebble Beach. And uh, it was unbelievably uh, memorable considering I wasn't playing. Because I always thought to myself, I'm gonna be you know, playing here, play, playing on the tour, but you know, little did I know I was gonna be flying drones on, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday that week. Um, so, had our business, was doing well. Um, transitioned that into um, more of an aerial data and uh, you know actionable information company uh, went through a couple iterations of, of, of that company and uh, ultimately realized it is really hard to have a startup in the drone industry. Um, it's really hard to have a startup period but the, the, the principles again and I'm gonna get to the principles here in a minute because it, it will tie in everything that I'm saying. Um, it was tough and so at the same time um, I had one of our clients was uh, the governor's office, and I interviewed for a job. Um, I and this is a really interesting story, actually. I I sat down, and this is honestly my my first interview in my entire life. I played golf. I had my own company. Never had done an interview. I sat down 
started talking a little bit about myself, what I, you know, what I had done, where I had come from, and I said I played for the played for the UNLV golf team. And uh, my my boss at the time, uh, well, future boss at the time, um, goes, "Hold on, stop, stop right there. You played for the UNLV golf team?" I said, "Yeah, I did." He goes, "Well, I got a 14 year old son who want, his dream is to play for the UNLV golf team." So you can imagine how the conversation went from there. It definitely was not about drones. It was uh, <laughs> completely about golf and uh, ended up getting the job on the spot. And those are the type of relationships that you'll see um, from being a UNLV athlete that you need to take advantage of. Um, and so I've been now uh, working for the Governor's Office of Economic Development for about two years uh, doing business development. Um, and helping lead a, lead a drone industry that's very new. Uh, the job's extremely exciting. I get to work with the biggest companies in the world, uh, try and bring them to Nevada, and see technology that uh, in a few years here, you guys will be, you know, when you order Uber Eats, it's gonna come and get dropped off by a drone. So I, see some, I get to see some cool stuff. Uh, but back to what, what I really learned at UNLV and what I hope you all have learned at your time at UNLV were, were four real core principles um, that I still live to this day. Uh, principle number one is taking care of the small things. Um, coach would always say, if you take care of the small things, the big things get a lot easier. One of those is being on time. Now, Coach Knight, we call this night time. His watch is 10 minutes earlier than the actual time. So, if, you sh if you're supposed to be somewhere at seven o'clock, and you show up at 6.51, you're late. And I remember very vividly, I think it was my junior year, it was a postseason 7 a.m. Saturday morning putting practice. And I had hit every single light on my way to the golf course that morning. And I showed up onto the putting green at 6.51, and coach goes, get out of here. I said, coach, it's 6.51. He goes, you're late, leave. So, Account that what that teaches you is accountability. And what I also had to do was run a Thomas and Mac. Yeah. I don't the team still does this. I don't know if everybody in this room knows what that means. But when we got in trouble or if we did something wrong, the top level of the Thomas and Mac, we had to go up and down every single flight of stairs. And we're golfers, we're not basketball players, we're not football players, you know. My legs are tired. So I had to do that too. So taking care of the small things like we had to be clean shaven. Coach obviously isn't real happy with me right now. Uh, with, with what I got going on here. But taking care of little things, being on time, being clean shaven, having your tie good looking good when you show up to the airport. It's the little things that really do make a huge difference when you're trying to make an impact on something. And so that's a you know, huge lesson that I learned from Coach, and one that I would hope that all of you really do understand, um, is, is taking care of those small things. Uh, principle number two was to get 1% better every single day. That means hitting an extra 10 drivers, doing an extra rep. Uh, whatever it is, whatever your sport is, doing one more than what your coach has asked you to do. If you think about it, 1% every single day, it's 100% in 100 days. If you take that principle and apply it to whatever you're doing, you're gonna be pretty good at whatever you're doing. 500% in 500 days, I'll take it. So do the extra, take, you know, do the extra, take the extra time, it will pay off in the long run. Uh, principle number three was to embrace your UNLV community. Uh, like that story that I just said, it's extremely important. The people that you know in this room, the people that have helped support you and get you through where you are now, these are people that, if you do the right thing, will stick with you your entire life. I have, I have meetings all the time in the UNLV engineering uh, school, didn't go to the engineering school, um, but I have meetings all the time at UNLV and what we're doing. And every time I come on campus, I see somebody that I know, um, somebody that I've had a relationship with in the past. Um, I'm still really close to the, to the men's golf team, uh, follow everything that they do and support them, because um, I realize that part of the reason of where I am now is because of what I learned at UNLV over those five years. Uh, it, it is an, an extremely exciting time for all of you. I hope that you all don't take for granted what you have. Um, it's, it's rare to be a Division I college athlete. Uh, it's even more rare to have a, a career in what you guys want to do. 
and when you get to a point in your professional career